This is the St. George's Foundation Orphanage in Hastings. So these are all orphans? Yes, they are all orphans. People are survivors. Family and friends are afraid to touch these children. If not for the foundation, they would have been homeless. Selena! Met Selena, 15 years old, one of the over 1,700 Ebola survivors in Sierra Leone. Her mother contracted Ebola in December 2014, but was misdiagnosed and discharged from the clinic. She ended up infecting her entire family. So right now I'm not the only survivor. I lost, I lost them all. I lost my daddy, my brother, it's me, mama, in December. Selena was discharged from the PTS2 Ebola Treatment Center, but her relatives rejected her when she was taken home. I beg them, I ask them what I do then, they don't answer me. It pain me, I feel her, because by that kind of situation, they have been missing and go hold me. Now they're not the most popular for take care of me, at least. But they shown me in that moment they were need them. They miss your family? Yeah, they miss them. Why not you know they what they ask for? What you know they give me? You know they give buy for myself. It's not rich dates. We're going to church. The Ebola outbreak did not only expose the weak health system, but the foster care system in Sierra Leone, the Deputy Health Minister admits. Orphans, too many orphans now. How will social um, welfare is working on that? But we have a lot of orphans. How are these kids going to go back to school? Okay, how, who's going to take care of them? Culturally, relatives would have taken these orphans in, but the fear and stigma surrounding Ebola wouldn't let them. We, we're left with a, a lot of things, issues that we have to make sure that we, you know, we put in place. And it's going to take time, it's going to take effort, it's going to take experience from everybody. We can draw from every country that have the suggestion or anyone that have the suggestions, bring it on, we'll listen and we'll, you know, we'll see how we could put things back on track. Another challenge is the medical complications of survivors. These survivors suffer from visual and hearing impairment or insomnia, among others. Doctors can diagnose Selena's case. It takes some time for her to respond to questions. Another girl who survived Ebola but is left paralyzed. We should have a post-Ebola syndrome clinic so that everybody who has been infected and survived will have a periodic check because the syndromes are becoming so many and so diverse that now, as at now, we don't know which one to be tagged as post Ebola syndrome. A survivor's clinic set up by the Sierra Leone government is expected to address this problem. Nakwa Kwabla, TV3 Hastings. All right, so you're welcome back. And that is the story that won Veronica Nakokwabla, formerly of TV3 Network Limited, the coveted CNN Multi-Choice um, Health and Medical Award for 2015. She's currently with the um, African News, uh, but she won this award on the ticket of TV3. And this is where she actually acquired all he, her uh, journalistic skills and prowess. And so Nakwa is here. She's affectionately known as Nakwa here at TV3. And she's here to shed some more light on the story and the award um, she has just won. You're welcome. And Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. You know, for, for most of us who heard that you had won this award, you know, really weren't surprised. Because the Nakwa we knew was committed. She was dedicated. She was passionate about about you know what what she did at least when you're here at TV3 did it come as a surprise to you yes it did uh, let me say it feels good to be home though <laughs> I love it here well it did come as a surprise because you know even though it's a good story they are equally very good and compelling stories so yes it was a surprise even in my category mm -hmm. the my competitor she's from Nigeria mm -hmm. had also a very good story Somebody who called uh, a routine story FGM, mm -hmm. but she went the extra mile to tell it in a way that has never been told.
but hey, here we are. What, why, we won. why do you think you won? What, what do you think it is about the story that, that won the award? Well, from what the judges said, yeah. they, they said they had a tough time, you know. <laughs> um, actually, <laughs> yes, agreeing on who wins each of the category and yeah. even the overall winner because mm -hmm. all the stories were compelling. They were telling us things that um, other stories were not telling, mm. you know. Scripting, picture, quality, sound, everything, going the extra mile, risking it, all the stories had it. But then, um, well, they had to choose. They just had to choose. But they were equally good stories. Yeah. At, at what point do you think grace was a factor? I think from the beginning, yeah. right from the beginning, yes. Because when, when even uh, the competitors, when we saw each other's stories, everyone was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> People are working, yeah. you know. And grace from the beginning right from when you submit it and you are called you know you do the screaming it's grace fantastic yeah fantastic yeah I, I want you to help us understand the psyche of a journalist what what is it that pulls a journalist towards a particular story before we even come to why you did this it depends on the journalist sometimes it's passion sometimes out of curiosity sometimes, sometimes it's just work it's just work Sometimes it's just routine. Let's just do this and get over with it. But sometimes you just want to know more. Why is this happening? You follow to the end, even if it's risky. And for me, uh, I think it's all three. Curiosity, passion, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's work. Because yeah. it's my work. I love yeah. my work. Yeah. yeah. So, so your story titled, we just saw that um, Freetown Ebola orphans focused on the, the aftermath of the EVD, the Ebola virus disease in Sierra Leone and Liberia. These were the worst affected countries. What led you there? Now that we understand the psyche of a journalist, what pulled you towards that region? Well, um, we're here in Ghana. When the, the outbreak began, we had, from all the international works, international networks, I beg your pardon, moving in there to tell us the story. Meanwhile, here in Ghana, we had the Amir office. Everything was logistics, everything, everything was being moved from Ghana to these three countries. And so here at TV3, we began the platform to talk more about Ebola, sensitize the public, mm -hmm. more of education. Mm -hmm. So uh, my team and I, um, with the in the capable hands of Beatrice Abbey, yes. our news editor, we yes. organized this platform. But well, she's been promoted. Just so you know. Oh, okay. She's the COO now. Oh, <laughs> congratulations too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after all that, we realized, okay, why don't we go? So the Ministry of Health approached us, and uh, it was a good opportunity not to turn down. Mm -hmm. They also wanted to know how uh, the the health workers from Ghana were faring in the two countries. Somebody had to follow up on them. Okay. So we were given the opportunity okay. to go with two doctors, Dr. Okay. Fred Adumanko and Dr. Lawrence. We do. Okay. We went with them. So it, we went there to do our job as well yeah. and also to check on the Ghanaian health workers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously you didn't go there, you know, with the story in mind to look at, well, yes, you went to look at the aftermath of the EVD, but not necessarily to look at the plight, the state in which, um, the deplorable state in which orphans, Ebola orphans, you know, had been left in. That's, that's the state. It, it was, you went there and this cropped up. Yeah, it was, it was part of it. We had listed a, a number of stories to follow up on okay. because... Like I said earlier, you see on the international networks yes. what was happening. So yes. let's see. But you went if to check really, on yes, our Ghanaian health workers, yes, for instance. Yes, but let's see if these issues are really as dire as they were said on the ground. Okay. So upon hitting the ground, yeah. we realized that yes, it's true. These are very challenging times for this country. So we had to hit it from all angles. Yeah, there were several. We, I actually submitted a series of stories. Yeah. Uh, so this this was just like the. The, 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 the one, not the winning one, but yeah. this was selected f uh, amongst all, but they, they looked at all yes. to give me this award. Were there any fears you had to conquer first? Uh, you know, because <laughs> I'm wondering if there was any yeah, protection preparatory <laughs> period medically that you had to go through, you had to be vaccinated over a period. I know it was only in 2015 that yes. the WHO actually um, introduced that 
um, vaccine which they, purport, they purported to, yeah. to be 100% efficacious. Did you have to get any vaccination? Yes. No, oh. no, we didn't have to get vaccination, okay. but we were prepared. Um, the Minister of Health, uh, Ketsi, what was, what Dr. Was the Victor, yeah, Dr. Victor Bampo, he was in charge of the emergency team. Yeah. So we were educated on what to do. And at that time, you could only go with the UN, you know, everything had ceased yeah there was no movement in and out yeah. so we went through yes, some medical closed. yes yeah. some medical checkup with my cameraman philip <laughs> katriku <laughs> we were not scared we we after the training we realized it's it's safe you just do what you have to do and you'll be safe and they told i'm surprised you say that yes, because it really safe. it wasn't even until this year that liberia was declared totally ebola yes, free so yes. i'm surprised in fact 10 percent of the deaths recorded were uh, um, um for for health workers, for health workers which, yes. which you know so i'm these are people who had the full protective they, yes, regalia they, and we, you, went, we went we you. went with some we went with uh, <laughs> protective clothes but we didn't even use them i we see. didn't use them yes i see all right since you were there on the ground perhaps you can paint it we've seen a bit of it on tv okay. but perhaps you're you're in a better position to paint a vivid picture of what the plight of these children you know those orphaned you know because of ebola was it it, it was quite sad for selena the lady you saw in the story she She's a bit old, so she understood what was going on. Yeah. But not for those other kids. Yeah. For them, they, they didn't know what was going on, you know. They had survived Ebola, or they had lost their parents to Ebola, and they just couldn't go back home. Yeah. They had to go to a new home, an orphanage. But for people like Selena, it was difficult. Surviving the disease itself is difficult. Mm -hmm. You saw the complications afterwards. Mm -hmm. And now she can't go home. Her family, loss, insomnia. Her family yes. will not accept her because they're afraid when she comes home, she's coming with Ebola. Yeah. It was, it was very difficult. And at that point, you know, when she was crying, it got very emotional for all of us. Yeah. We were there with Dr. Sego. He, he was one of the, the Ghanaian medical doctors that were there. He, he actually treated um, Selena. Yeah. He also got teary at a point because for him, he said he was so excited when Selena recovered, you know, and he was excited that, okay, out of, you know, the number of people who had died in her family, she has survived, she's going home, yeah. only to hear that the, her people will not accept her. Yeah. So at that point, everyone got teary in the orphanage. But then when you look at there were babies and all that, you realize that the problem was a very serious problem. And the Deputy Minister of Health admitted that they had a problem. Yeah. I understand um, they have done, they have been able to rehabilitate some of them, but it's still, there are lots of them, so it's still a problem on their social I, I can imagine because you're you're letting us understand the ostracism these children are subjected to. But I, and there's only would, children, even adults. Even adults, yes. And I think that there there may be some legitimate reasons. After all, we gather that even for survive, survivors, you know, who have recovered, the the apparently the, the virus has the ability to hide in a survivor's body for weeks, months, even up to years, but may resurface, may get you know, active again after a period. It's good enough reason to keep such people at bay, isn't it? But psychologically, let's 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 look at the situation. One, when you contract the disease, where you are even put at. See the way health workers cover themselves, come and treat you. You you feel like you're not even human anymore. And so when you when you survive you have survived. You, 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 you expect you ex a, a warm welcome. A warm sort welcome, of. Yes. sort of. I, I, like I've been through hell. I'm back. Yeah. Please receive me. And but I don't the, get the chances as well. are that you might go through hell again and take people with you. No, but then medically, you yes, just medically, have, which is why I, just, I think it, that it it's important. Mean, it, even the doctors uh -huh. tell us that the person has survived. Even the doctors, it, died. Even some doctors, <laughs> <laughs> but they were in direct contact. Contact with yes, they were in direct yes. contact. But the survivors, like you said. Just a few, none even as I as we sit here now, we we we've not had the uh, the, the disease resurfacing in survivors. It it could happen, but it hasn't happened. I, so, I saw the report from the WHO. Yeah. It, it it in fact is very likely to happen. But it because hasn't happened. It's the nature of the virus. <laughs> that means that you want to be as careful as possible but and not, not to, contract. Not to ostracize them. Well, that's that's which takes me to the future. <laughs> <laughs> which takes me to the future of such children, you know, and even the adults. Mm. What do you think the future holds for them? I mean, if I don't know how widespread this information I just gave is mm. about the fact that the virus can hide for a while even in a survivor's body and you know and reactivates itself i know how widespread that information is but given imagine that people got to know of this what do you think the future of these survivors children and adults would be well before we left the place they had formed support groups 
um, to support each other okay. and also uh, sensitize the public okay. that they should accept them. But then for these children, um, I, I can't really tell, like mm -hmm. the Deputy Minister of Sierra Leone mm -hmm. uh, said, they have to go back to school. They have to be reintegrated into society. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, they are still, they are, they are alive. We yeah. need to, we need to yeah. uh, um, keep them close I, I to I think the WHO things. started this comprehensive care plan for yeah, Ebola for, survivors. Yes. yes, perhaps that would work. That and would work. and they, they had clinics yeah. where okay. the survivors could go okay. for check -ups. Finally, mm -hmm. I, I think one of the cardinal points for journalism really is to bring such sensitive issues to the fore so that where there's some anomaly they can be rectified sure. so in the long run aside your plaque and whatever cash <laughs> prize you want in the long run what what changes do you think the story would bring about in sierra leone and in liberia we well, did it did it has already it has already for ghana i think people became aware of how dire the situation mm -hmm. were in mm -hmm. two of the uh, the three worst affected countries uh -huh. but in sierra leone and liberia at least it was some sort of attention to the plight of these survivors mm -hmm. and the orphans especially like we said in the report the social system had really really broken down yeah so which is the unlikely. health care system, the in, health care in, system in liberia was well. actually in crisis yes yes so the, there's a lot of re, uh, restructuring yes, going on in so. these two yeah. countries but like yeah. she said they still need help Thank you so much Thank and you. congratulations to you again. So you. this came with some money, didn't it? Are you willing to share how talking. much? You know, yeah. all your competitors here are, are looking. <laughs> you know, they say success has many fathers. You came in and I you see how you. everyone is coming so close. No, but they're very good people. You oh, know, they are. My I team, team, I love and yes, yes, yes. The workers here. Yeah. It's yeah. true. We are we are like family. But they are expecting something from you, that's for sure. <laughs> Final words. Can you say something to cheer people on? Perhaps the people yes, who have like been in this industry for so long and haven't won anything yet. Yeah, what? I I think uh, what we gathered from the the various forums we had at the seminar was yeah. that as journalists, we have to leave our comfort zone. It's about time. Uh, Africa is seen as, even though we, we don't like to be referred to as one country, we don't like to, it's a continent with different yes, countries, but absolutely. whatever affects your neighbor affects you. And it's, it's unfortunate, but then you might say it's far away, but it will come it close doesn't. to you. People, we, have, we recorded this in the U.S., in Italy, yes, in Spain. So, yes, yeah, so really we, ha we have yeah. to follow the story, yeah. leave our comfort zone. Yeah. It's not nice to be on the plane, you know, not bad for days and all that. But right. You have to get the story. Follow the story. And this has been worth it. Yeah, yeah. Can thank I, can you. I thank and the management and stuff yes, of TV3 yes, as please. well? Yes, 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 yes. And the entire team. <laughs> thank you so much. It's good to be back. Yeah. yeah. It's good thank to you. have you. Uh, <laughs> congratulations once thank again. You. Veronica Nako Kwabla, um, just the award recipient, the coveted um, CNN Multi Choice Health and Medical Awards. Sure. Yes. And then the money. Mm -mm. The money. We need to talk about. <laughs>